Hi guys, Keith Buckmerk Farms. If you can't tell, I'm staying in my walk-in cooler today. So today we're going to be discussing the best and cheapest ways to get refrigeration up and going on your farm. So let me show you. But first, head over to ArkhamburgFarms.com, scroll down the bottom, digital tools and training. We got a bunch of cool stuff down there, a bunch of cool spreadsheets. Tomato jungle that I'm in right now. No, not included. But we also have our consulting, uh, our side openers, our t-shirts, and all kinds of cool stuff. So go over there and check it out. Uh, next week, we'll be taking you on the fall, well not fall, end of heat, hopefully, summer farm tour, and kind of show you what we're doing and getting ready for fall. So here we go back to the refrigeration units. Now the walk-in cooler, hands down, by far, is the best refrigeration option. I'll walk out before that fan kicks back on again. But they are super expensive. Now, this unit behind me is an eight by 12. I actually got this through grant funding. I could never afford this at the scale I am. These babies are about $10,000. They're great, they do exactly what you want. They are built for cooling produce, they cool it quick. Downfalls are you can't leave stuff out in the open because it'll dry out real quick because the amount of air that's moving around. Other than that, kind of noisy and you have to have a specific area set up like the building I'm in. After that, we're gonna head down and show you what most people use. And then at the end, we'll get to the cheapest ways to build refrigeration units for your farm. So be sure and stick around for that. So the next is the most common method used, which is a CoolBot powered walk-in bunch of walk-in panels that are put together in a fashion outdoors in the elements to keep your produce cool. We'll go in and I'll show you how it's set up. So it's actually a fairly unusually shaped walk-in. It's got a big old L in the middle of it. I had to do that because of the window air conditioner and the old uh, pack house which is now the office next door. But this is your standard walk-in that most farms use. It's a bunch of old walk-in panels. I screwed them together. These are actually fiberglass field, which I didn't know when I bought them, but I got them for fairly cheap. Um, powered by CoolBot. They're cool. They're also very expensive. Um, basically, hook up the CoolBot, take the sensor off, take a sleeve, put it to here, snatch the secondary pin sensor out of the back of the unit because these bigger air conditioning units have them. And I believe it's wrapped up in this bundle here. Otherwise, it doesn't work right. Um, premise of CoolBot is, it actually has a resistor out here on the end that it triggers, turns on your temperature sensors right here. It actually heats up and tricks the uh, air conditioner to think that it's actually warmer than it is, which enables this thing to cool down further. Um, it'll only go to 34, which nobody needs to go any further, otherwise they start to ice up. Uh, one big thing you gotta watch for, you gotta keep the inside clean and the outside clean. Otherwise, this little baby here will give you the E8 error code. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that means it's not working. I actually did a video on that. Look up E8 error code. Check it out. It'll tell you how to fix it. Very, very simple problem to remediate. This kind of walk-in is great because you can actually walk in it. But again, this is expensive because you can buy the panels. You got to buy the cool bot. You got to buy a bigger air conditioner. This unit right here, probably about, oh, I think I've got about $1,200 in it. I also have foam below me. I got some geofoam from a job site. Foam on the roof as well. And then I had to actually put metalized, that's the, uh, the humidifier, metalized uh, foam on the walls. I don't use this as a walk-in anymore. This is where the light's gonna get kind of screwy in the video because it's now my germination center where I do all of my starts at for the farm. I just run it without the cool bot, but if I ever need the extra space, I actually still have a germination chamber I can move all this into. Turn on the cool bot unit, blam. Instant walk-in, instant lot of space. But I actually have two more refrigerator units on the farm, and this is where it gets cool, because this is the cheapest way to run refrigerators on your farm, no doubt, hands down. So this unit behind me is the cheapest refrigeration unit I have on the farm. It's just an old 
two door reach in commercial fridge broken $75 got a window unit I bought it uh, used if you buy them at the end of the season in fall people are just willing to give them away basically 50 bucks for that that's what's actually doing the cooling for this fridge um, I'll show you another unit here in a second but this one actually I had to cut a hole in the side of it to get it in there so here is the real trick of how this is actually ran and I will turn you around and show you because basically I'm using a light bulb and a chicken heater. So I'll turn around and show you this trick because it's awesome. This right here is what I believe was the origin of the CoolBot. I heard rumors of it a long time ago. Same premise as the CoolBot. We have the temperature sensor on the window air conditioner right here. It comes down, which I don't want to uncover that because it's really going to mess with the camera comes down to what is a lamp stem with an LED light bulb in it. You have to use LEDs and change them out every year. This plugs into a temperature controller that's actually used for a heat light for your chickens. I actually use the heating and cooling one so it has both settings. That way if you need to during the winter you can plug in a small little space heater keep it above freezing. So this unit here when it sees it gets too hot in here turns on the light bulb. The light bulb heats up the sensor on the air conditioner. Tricks the air conditioner into thinking it's too hot so it'll cool it down. Biggest downfall with this is the cool bots have a secondary sensor that goes in here to make sure your unit's not icing up. Uh, very common if you're trying to cool too quickly, too fast, or too much at once. So the trick with this is if you're just running your produce in here like normal, I can fit, what was it, 12? totes in here the uh, large roughneck totes uh, I think they're 20 gallons your standard ones that most farms have three stacks four high all the way across this got two doors you're reaching it very easily but if you're bringing a lot of stuff in you can't just take it down to your about 40 ish degrees because that's where I usually set them you have to start off at 50 and then work your way down especially if you've got an older window air conditioner like this that's on its last leg because it will actually freeze over the coil. I had that problem this year when I was cooling down my potatoes. I kept freezing up the unit. I found if I took it to 50, actually I started at 55, and then brought it down to 50 because I was at the curing stage for a couple weeks. Once I got this baby actually cooled down and got everything in it, the thermal mass holds, I can't say holds the cool, but it doesn't have any heat in it because actually what air conditioners do, which is completely off topic, is they dump heat to the outside. But after I slowly cooled it down, it worked great. Mainly because this unit's so old. When it was first brand new, it was great. Um, also had to fix it because it didn't throw the eight error code, but it was doing the same exact thing because this one is all analog. It's another important thing with these is to make sure you get a unit that when the power turns off and turns back on, automatically turns back on. Otherwise, if you have power outage, you need to come and check this baby real quick. And as you can see, this is outside. This unit's been here for seven years, runs great. I only fired up four potatoes or if I need more space nowadays. But now we're gonna go into the pack building to my other one that I use specifically for my fruiting crops. Now this unit behind me, this is actually the one I did years ago, the famous DIY CoolBot video. Most likely if you're watching it, you've seen it. Uh, I was much younger and less hairy back then. But this one is still up and running today with the same exact stuff. Same thing. Old commercial reach in refrigerator, $75. Used air conditioner, I picked up off of, I believe, Marketplace. It might have been something different back then. Uh, $100. Controller, these are 50. This is actually a different controller. This is not the Inkbird heating and cooling unit. It does that weird stuff with the camera. But anyways, it actually shows at 58. I keep all this stuff from 55 to 60 and just kind of let it ride because it's got all of my fruiting crops in it. Um, the great thing about the units that have the compressors on top like this is that, if I can get you around here, you can just cut out the side here and it actually fits underneath the lid and down below. That other unit was bigger and older and I had to physically cut a hole in the side. So this was much more user friendly. Originally I actually had the, condenser, the air conditioner over here, but it was dripping on it and it was dripping into it. I found it much better to have it off to the side. I do have a bucket over here to actually catch the condensation that comes off the unit. That's the one thing if you're doing it inside or you'll have a wet floor. But again, same amount of space, 
really nice keeps everything really good and cool and I've never had a problem with this unit that's actually where the old uh, condenser blew through so now the old, new one is actually pushing air through down and sucking it back up through the top works great the window air conditioner is on its last leg as well because this one is about six years uh, this was probably the second year I was actually doing this or maybe the third year after I had the original one I immediately got a second one because we expanded we need more space um, other great thing is or not great thing is what I've got hooked up to it so you bring an air conditioner inside what does an air conditioner do takes heat out of something blows it somewhere else this is a pack building it's hot outside I don't need more heat in here so what I did was actually see if I can get around here built a paper cowl and attach it to the back of it this is actually just one of our uh, half bushel boxes that we use on the farm they're very common for produce I literally just took the bottom of it let me turn you around here took my half bushel box taped up the bottom which is actually starting to fall apart a little I'm supposed to get, be making a metal cowl for this I haven't got around to it it's still working great um, lids up here just taped it wrapped it around put a four inch takeoff that you can find an HVAC aisle hook that to some dryer flex and up to an exhaust fan that is actually an old exhaust fan I had in one of my propagation greenhouses from very early on and then that baby goes straight to outside so we're taking all of the heat off of here if you put your hand on it you can actually feel it sucking in and taking it right outside if you don't have the exhaust fan out there it will not take it to the outdoors because this does not blow hard enough to go where anywhere else Another alternative would be to point it out the building, but I did not want to cut a hole in the building. Now that's a quick tour of refrigeration on your farm that almost all farms use. From the most expensive, which is the big gigantic walk-in behind me, to which I consider the cheapest, easiest, and best. And these bad boys was about $225 in the whole thing. Air conditioner, old fridge, it doesn't work, and then Inkbird heating and cooling controller. I highly recommend these when you're first starting out as you get bigger and you need more walk-in space and actually have to have something to walk in. Get some old panels. They are somewhat difficult to find depending on where you're at, but they tend just to pop up randomly. That's where I got mine at. They actually sat in the barn for a year or two before I actually needed more space and built out the other unit that I showed you the second time. Then if you write a crazy grant proposal and they give it to you, you can get a big giant walk-in like that one behind me. But those are not needed at the level we're at. Again, the only reason we have it is because we were able to get it and it is awesome. I will tell you that. But for the money, this is where, it is, where it's at. So, hope you all liked me Saturday. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all. Have a good day.